your eyes. We met through friends and we kind of ran in the same social circle. We dated for two years, got married, did the whole thing that everyone does, right? We had the chance to have a, a house on the lake with boats and everything. So I had a huge group of friends and I mean, we're busy every weekend. Mm -hmm. One day Ginger came to me and asked me like, hey, what do you think about traveling? Every year we were going overseas, usually in Europe somewhere. Um, we go to Colombia and Costa Rica. I mean, we, we were going places, but we were maxing out on vacation and we found ourselves just like waiting for the calendar year to start over to get more vacation. It was a really simple conversation though, because I remember it, it was over dinner. I was like, what do you think if we sell everything and just travel all the time? And Greg was like, yeah, if we can afford it, that sounds great. And that was it. Like that was, that was it. And from there on out, it was all we talked about. We had a camper van very briefly and I would say we had it for two weeks before we realized it was not gonna work for us. We wanted this to be a lifestyle and not a vacation. That went into our planning and into our rig selection, knowing that we wanted to live in this for a long time. We also wanted an all aluminum camper. You know, we don't wanna just buy the quickest, easiest thing necessarily. We wanted to buy what was gonna hopefully be good for us long-term. I was researching every kind of rig in part because we were considering them, but it's amazing the information I got from those different communities online. When you're walking it, when it's all nice in the dealer's lot is one thing, when you are living in it is another. Hi, I'm Ginger. And I'm Greg. And we are Driven to Adventures in our tiny truck camper home. Once we decided we wanted to go full-time on the road, I was super impatient. And so this rig came about as kind of a compromise between us. Um, it would have, we hoped, the off-road capabilities that we wanted, and we'd be able to modify it to be off-grid capable. And also, as we spend more time in our rig, we can figure out, you know, what we like, what we don't like, to show that in the future, if we build our own, we have a better understanding of our needs and, yeah, how to build it what works best for us. We bought the truck from Canada, um, what, six months ago? About six months ago, and we did a ton of modification. The truck came only with a flatbed. So all the work that I've done on this truck, uh, I did that at Meg Salt Lake in Salt Lake City. So what I did is I built a structure in metal that I welded and covered with uh, this uh, material. It's some kind of plastic material. And actually all this plastic material is reused. We just took advantage of that and build that basically for almost nothing. Some of the storage is for tools, some is for outdoor gears, some is also, uh, so this storage for example, is uh, hosting the spare tire. Um, and I build it a little bit bigger than what we currently need. The same way on the rear you can see, I have a cutout, huge cutout over the wheel well. Um, so the intent behind that is we plan in maybe in the future to increase the size of the tire to go from a dually uh, to a super single. I have a lot of tools, maybe more than most. I like to be able to help others. Usually I'm the person who's going to stop and say like, hey, how can I help, you know? We bought this bumper from Ironbolt and um, I have it actually custom made. Um, such a way that there is like some receiver for the light that I, that I have added. So there is a what, one, two, three set of lights from a Baja design, um, which I like a lot. Um, usually we avoid driving uh, during the night, but if we have to, um, those lights are so powerful, it's basically almost like daytime when you're driving, so it's it's really, really nice. Uh, on this side of the camper, uh, so I have, again, the same type of storage that I have on the other side. Uh, but on this side in specific, I have um, my air compressor that I use to uh, reinflate my tires. I also have like uh, some uh, additional like drinking water just in case of emergency. Um, I also, so we have more storage for gears. Uh, we have like a, a tandem kayak and so on. I also have in this compartment um, some of my electrical components. So I have my uh, solar charge controller in the back, and I have um, a pure sign charge charger and inverter combined. Um, so it's a uh, 2,000 watt or two kilowatt. Uh, so we use this inverter for uh, 
everything that uses a lot of power. So basically when you're cooking, uh, so all the cooking appliances and uh, the AC. So in terms of solar panel, we have uh, five solar panels from Grape Solar. Uh, they are um, 180 watt each, so a total of 900 watt. And I have six battery of 120 amp hours from Victron uh, that are connected in parallel. And uh, so a total of 720 uh, amp hours of battery. The battery that we have from Victron are AGM batteries. Our setup, I think, is working pretty good for us. We recently added this, the fifth solar panel. Uh, we used to have only four. Uh, so now we have five solar panels. It's, it's working pretty good. When we converted this camper, we decided to take all the propane out. Uh, multiple reason. One of the main reasons is you see a lot of uh, fires that are originating uh, from the propane uh, system, fridge or tank leaking. So I changed our uh, water heating system and our uh, heater inside uh, the camper to a diesel uh, system. So what we have is we have a SPAR. I can show you. So we have a SPAR water heater and a tank. So this tank is uh, for the diesel, for the furnace, which is independent from the tank that we have for our truck. The reason being it's a truck camper. So if we want to uh, separate the truck for the, from the camper, we can still have hot water and heat inside our camper. Going with diesel is super efficient and we just have to go to gas station, right? We go to the gas station to fill up our tank for our truck. At the same time, we fill up the tank for the heater if we need to. But in general, it's consuming almost nothing. All right, so this is inside. It is cozy, but it works really well for us. So when we started researching overlanding and RVing, one thing I saw a lot of was RV fridge fires, which scared the crap out of me. And when I was researching, I realized that a lot of those fires were caused by the ammonia type of fridges. Um, you know, you had to always be level and they were just, they seemed really dangerous to me. So since we were going to remove the propane anyways, we decided to go with a compressor type fridge, which is like a marine style fridge. It fit the same dimensions as our existing three-way fridge that we took out of here. Um, but this has no ammonia, there's no risk of fire, and it just makes me feel much safer. We also don't have to worry if we're on level or anything like that. So it works off of a compressor, we run it completely off of our solar, um, we could plug it in if we were ever plugged in, but we never plug in. So yeah, it's uh, it's seven cubic feet. We do have fridge and freezer because we are ice cream people and we really, really love ice cream and can't live without it. So the kitchen when we bought this camper was hideous. Um, <laughs> it was like a really, really dark counter, uh, a built-in propane stove and the smallest sink I've ever seen. We couldn't even wash like a pot or a dish. It was ridiculous. We ripped all that out, and while we had the counter out, Greg did all of the plumbing for underneath for our diesel heat and hot water system. So once we were done with that, we put in a new counter, put in the tile, which really brightened things up a lot in here, and a much, much bigger sink. We purposely did not build in a cooktop. Um, like I said, we removed our propane, so we did consider building in a diesel cooktop. They are super expensive and we just w weren't sure if we wanted to make that commitment. So we have several ways that we cook. One is we have an induction cooktop, which is, you know, plugs in off electric. We have an Instapot, which draws almost no power and we cook a lot of things in. And then we also have an electric grill griddle, like a George Foreman type thing. And it's awesome because we run all of that off of our solar. We also have the convection microwave, which was here when we bought the camper. And I have to say, we do use this quite a bit. Since we don't have a built-in cooktop, we use this every morning to boil water, to make coffee. It doesn't take a lot of power if you're just using it in short bursts. I did want to put some light color tile in here because this camper was super dark. We went with real tile, but we did not want to use heavy grout and mortar. We just weren't sure how that was going to hold up going down the road. So what we used is a product called Muscle Bound. It is an adhesive tile mat that we got at Lowe's. You put that matting all over the walls and then you stick your tiles to it. And then we used an RV specific tile grout. Um, it's like a really obscure product that you have to order from some guy who makes it in his backyard. Um, and it worked great. 
we've been on the road now full time seven months a lot of back roads a lot of off roads and we've had absolutely no cracking or issues with any of the tile or the grout so above the sink we have what we refer to as our control center we have our monitor for our solar up here we have our access to our solar charge controller um, and then we have a lot of things that we've added we did add a tank monitor to our freshwater tank which we didn't have before so we can see that we are still full right now that's a big deal because when you're trying to conserve water and you don't know how much water you have it's just you know we're constantly refilling our water but as we're getting ready to go to mexico and central america we, we really need to know how much water we have so we added that and that was a really simple project we also have controls for our furnace and our inverter and then these over here are super fun this is uh, a gauge that tells us how much diesel is in our diesel heater in the tank and then this is the button to manually bring our air actuated antenna up and down so if the antenna is um, is down the light is red and if it's up it is green this pantry is locked i can't open it in order for me to open it i have to click a button that's hidden hidden under the counter and then it opens and this is a pull-out pantry that greg built you can see we really like snacks we're snack people <laughs> and this is actually the pantries are the only wood in the camper because nothing else is wood so when you close it it automatically locks so the dinette is on our slide out which means that it feels a lot bigger than it would if we didn't have the slide out when we got the camper um, it was a u-shaped dinette with a very very small table greg and i both work remotely from the camper so that tiny table was not going to work so we built this bigger table it can still be removed and we could put something here to make a a little double bed if we ever needed to i don't think we will it was important for us to have a large enough table that we could both have a computer up and be working under both seats uh, we have storage goes runs the whole length of the seat um, it's basically just stuff <laughs> because living in the small of a space has actually been really hard for us to downsize so for sure the things in the dinette some of them we don't need some of it is off-season stuff um, you know an extra set of sheets that kind of stuff but it's nice to have that storage um, available to us we also have storage under here in the step which is basically just extra shoes plastic bags some drinks <laughs> um, those are two of our big bulk storage areas and we do have all of our batteries for our solar are under um, this cushion right here which Craig can show you this window is something you see a lot in truck campers it is a pass-through window um, because we have a single cab truck our camper doesn't butt up to the back window though and a lot of people never use this window don't even think about using it for us because we're planning to leave the country we always always wanted an emergency pass-through a way to get from our camper to our vehicle without having to go outside in all of the different campers that we thought about buying or building, that was like a number one priority for us. So what we did when we built the storage boxes outside is we built this crawl through. So we can actually crawl through from here into the cab if we ever felt unsafe and needed to get away and get out of a situation. So we have a queen bed up here, which is really nice. The mattress that came with the camper was of course junk. So. When we were looking for mattresses, your standard mattress that you buy at a store is super heavy. And when you're doing a rig like this, weight really, really matters. So we again went to the foam factory in Michigan and we had foam cut for us. Uh, this mattress only cost us like $350, which is nothing for a mattress. And we were able to stack and layer the foam to make it perfect for us. So since we are full timing in here, we knew we needed closed storage. So Greg built these closets um, we have one on each side of the bed our TV is up here and we can watch a movie in bed or we can swing it around to watch it if we're cooking or anything like that so yeah overall it really works well for us so this is the back half uh, of the rig by the entry door this door used to look exactly like this two very small doors with a, a beam in the middle and it was like you couldn't fit anything in them it was ridiculous so we cut that out and made one big door we have room for our coats in here and our cups induction cooktop all that good stuff 
And this again has the same locking mechanism as the other pantry. So I have a, a hidden button because right now I can't open this. I open this and back here I have a ton more storage. I have my Instapot, spices, uh, you know, dishes, things like that. So this is just, when you're living in the small of a space, this is like a mecca of storage. Yeah. And then again, you have to lock it. I don't have to do anything. It automatically locks. Even if I forget to lock this, which I often do, this just flaps around. And because this is acrylic, it doesn't break. And I don't have to worry about everything shattering while we're going down the road. Down here, we just have a little bit more storage. You know, canned goods, things like that. In these pre-made RVs and campers, you will often find tons of wasted space. And if you're creative, you can find ways to use that space. Our old propane furnace used to be under this compartment here. It did not take up this whole area. It was again, just wasted space. So we did not have any drawers in the camper when we moved in. So again, we have our electric lock. I have to hit this button. And now we have a drawer here. This is space that we would not have had otherwise. It's our only drawer in the camper. Um, it houses, you know, sunglasses, our drone, games, stuff that we use often. And it's really nice to have. This room here houses just our toilet. Um, it's really small, but it, it works for what it is, which is just to go to the bathroom. The locker in the back, we actually found at an estate sale. You know, we can house toiletries and stuff in there. So that's awesome. We did switch out to a composting toilet. Absolutely, hands down, one of the best decisions we've ever made. The urine goes right into our old black tank. So a lot of people have the container on the front and they have to empty it. We don't have to do that. It goes into our black tank. We could probably go to the bathroom for three months before we had to empty that. And so over here is our shower. It is pretty big for a shower. We have on-demand hot water from our, our diesel heat and hot water system. You waste no water when you get in here to take a shower, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, we basically just use it for a shower. I don't, you know? So last thing I'll talk about in here is the floor. We went with a garage floor mat. Um, it looks really good considering it's meant to be in a garage. It is super heavy duty. Um, you know, we have had glass bottles break. We have, you know, dropped things. Nothing has damaged this floor. I will say that it is a little bit heavy. So if you're building a rig where weight is a real consideration, it's probably not the right choice for you. But if you want something that's super durable, I would absolutely recommend looking into the garage, looking into the garage flooring. You are trying to smush your whole life into 78 square feet. And that is a hard thing to do. There are constantly compromises. I, you know, I don't know anyone who says like, I have the best rig, I wouldn't change anything. This is not our dream rig. It is our, our best compromise rig and we are happy with it. We definitely are going off-road more than we ever anticipated. We love it, but this, the size of rig is almost too big to do the kind of off-roading we want. On the other hand, I don't know that we can live in anything smaller. I really, really don't um, without killing each other. At some point of time, it can be frustrating. Every day something can break or something will break. I mean, you meet so many people that are so nice. I mean, the community is awesome. You go to some places, you can go to some places, I mean, it's just mind blowing. It's definitely worth it to, to go to those places instead of just going through those places through your phone. We're able to sustain ourselves working part time, you know, in our late 30s, this is the dream. And I honestly can't imagine ever going back to Greg working 60 hours a week again and never seeing him. I see that we can make life work with less stuff, not working ourselves to death, you know, and, and just enjoying life more. I see that that's so possible to be able to travel the world with your best friend. It's everything I could have ever wanted. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching our tour. We are going to be heading into Mexico and Central and South America. We're really excited about that. And if you'd like to follow us on YouTube or Instagram, you can look for us at Driven to Adventures. We try really hard to show the real side of this lifestyle and all the bumps in the road that come along. So yeah. So if you want to follow us, just click on the link down below. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks.